the sky barge scene is the beginning of the end of any ability for any normal person to read this book and not start going, Shad Brooks is a fucking weird guy. Shadow of the Conqueror is the debut novel from YouTube, uh, fallen YouTube royalty, uh, known lol cow and uh, conservative fail son darling, Shad M. Brooks, brother to Jazza Brooks, uh, also known as Jazza Draws. Jazza does art. I can't remember exactly. Um, they're Australian people. Um, Arik, thank you. Arik is the guy's name. Um, he is a dude that is famous for being a sword guy, a sword fellow on the internet. Um, Shad has been on YouTube for a billion million years. He is a, um, a growing more and more and more so a laughing stock of the HEMA community, which he orbits but does not, I guess, apparently participate in. I haven't seen any fights from him, so he's kind of like a guy that does boxing instructing while never actually boxing or having ever boxed in his life, which is, you know, it is what it is. At some point in the last few years, um, Shad did the same thing that a lot of people on the internet have done, uh, which is give up on his sort of like piddling, it's okay, but it doesn't really grow my channel type content that fits perfectly in the algorithm in pursuit of those sweet, sweet grifter bucks um, by starting to espouse all sorts of crazy ass right wing um, bullshit and do right wing bullshit videos. Now with Shad specifically, I think he is legitimately delirious where he does not actually think he is a grifter. I think Shad is actually maybe a little unwell um, or just completely fucking delusional. I, I, I was giving him the benefit of the doubt before I read this book and I will get into it, but I think he legitimately has drank his own Kool-Aid. I think most of what he is as a person maybe has dribbled out of his ears onto his beautiful blue or red tunic and uh, he's gone a little crazy. Um, like a lot of the people in the comics gate sphere, which he's a fan of and a friend to, he has decided to do, um, the Thanos meme. I'll do it myself and start trying to make art. That is, uh, a term we recently found out superversive as in it is, uh, it tries to conform to a literally conformist view of, of society, a conservative view um, representing specifically uh, right-wing Christian West morality, right? Um, and at some point during that, he wrote Shadow of the Conqueror, which is his answer to, I don't know. I, I've seen him talk about this book a few times. From what I can gather, it's his answer to a lot of issues he's had with a lot of different things. And he just thought that he could address all of them. It's his, he wants to see sword fighting done his way. He wants to see fantasy done his way. But mostly, like all artists, he really wanted a platform to talk about his weird as fuck ideas. Which, as a weird fuck, I can really get behind. Um, I'm going to read the uh, back of the book, so to say, off Amazon here. And then I'm just going to start talking about it. I think that's enough intro. This book is, like I said, Shadow of the Conqueror 1, Chronicles of Everfall, <laughs> paperback uh, released July 1st, 2019. So this is like a four-year-old and some change book. I've never heard of it until I started this stream. I, I barely knew who Shad was. It's just one of those things like, oh, he's got a million subs. Like, yeah, there's a billion people on Earth. And I just don't watch, I just don't watch sweaty chubby guys fucking fuck around in their backyard with swords as much as I used to anymore. Because the one king, uh, the quick draw, uh, fucking quick draw Jabba or whatever the hell they called him, they used to cut all the water bottles in half. Like, I don't think he releases content anymore, and he was my go-to. Now that he's gone, market's kind of dried up for me. But this was released, like I said, July 1st, 2019. 
Who better to fight? Hold on, hold on. Who better to fight back the darkness of the world than the one most respons- the one responsible for most of it? Dalen, once known as the Great Bastard, the scourge of nations, Dalus the Conqueror, has lived in hiding since his presumed death. Burdened by age and tremendous guilt, he thinks his life is coming to an end. Unbeknownst to him, he's about to embark on a journey toward redemption where his ruthless abilities might save the world. Many battles await with friends to be made and a past filled with countless crimes to confront, all while trying to keep his true identity a secret. Indeed, it might be too much if not for the f- fabled power awaiting him. Everfall is a world of perpetual day where continents float in an endless sky. If one jumps from the continent, they will fall for many hours before returning to the same place from which they fell. Sky ships rule the air, powered by shining sunstone and industrial darkstone. A legendary order of knights bears mystical powers, which they use to hunt out the dreaded shade. Monsters that regular people turn into if trapped in darkness for the length of a fall. It is a world of enchanted swords, merciless monsters, mythical knights, and hard magic, filled with tales of wonder and adventure. It feels like there should be another sentence there at the end, but also fewer sentences before. And this kind of this kind of encapsulates almost the entirety of Shadow of the Conqueror. So I'm going to start with just the basic plot synopsis. We're going to hop into this. Once upon a time, there was a guy named Dalis, Dalin Navarin. I fucking swear to God, I think that's his last name. I don't care if it really is. Um, he had his children killed in front of him. His children and his wife were killed for reasons I can't remember by the aristocracy, just general, the aristocrats in the country he lived. During this book, there are a ton of countries mentioned. None of it fucking matters. It is the most uninteresting fucking world map. It doesn't make fucking sense. There are, I listened to this a lot. And I cannot remember fucking anything almost at all about the way that the world looks, except for it's all neoclassical and Baroque style buildings, which are words I think he heard on Twitter and just threw in here. But Dalen, Dalen was a guy with a wife and kids and his wife and kids were killed by the aristocrats, the aristocrats. And, um, So he killed all of the aristocrats by getting like a rebellion together or something. And then he started just killing them all. I remember more about him killing them than I can remember how he got the army together to do it. I don't particularly care about it because it's not particularly well done. Um, he, he, He kills all of them. And so then he takes over. Afterward, welcome, 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 what you welcome, find out very shortly after the beginning of this is that what Shadow or what Dalen the Conqueror is, is a fantasy allegory for quite literally Joseph Stalin. Um, I can't, or, or at least if not specifically Joseph Stalin, just any communist dictator who also did some mass murdering on the side. But communism comes quite directly into it in the narrative at a later point and it's amazing this is gonna this is it's a it's a tangled web of just like two strings so i will simultaneously be repeating myself a lot while also confusingly returning to the same point which happens consistently in this book uh after he overthrows the aristocracy because he's the smartest boy in smart fuck land he takes over all of the other countries basically and like annihilates their aristocracies. Put a pin in that. A lot of them are back by the end of the book for reasons. Um, during this point, he institutes his own economy, which we find out over the course of the book uh, was a sort of like confused, half understood version of a planned economy um, that's never really gone into detail on how it works, which is astounding for this book. Um, and he kind of gets like bored with power and he's sad because his wife and kids are dead. So he just starts raping the fuck out of all kinds of little girls, which is just a plot point in the book. I didn't think I thought it would be something that was like mentioned, 
Like, you know, in a Game of Thrones books where it's like, he's John, John the Childbreaker, the most disgusting. If, if it weren't for the protection of the king, that foul beast would have been slain years ago. His predilection is children, and long were the screams heard from his chambers. Millions of children gone in the dark of night. Something like that. Nope. Fuck you. It's like the main part of the second half of the book. We'll get to that. We'll get to that because for first off, as important of a detail as that is, it's not mentioned for a while. And we've got we've got miles to go before we sleep in this fucking book. I'm not I'm just trying to get his background story kind of hashed out because otherwise I'll have to start trying to figure out where it was explained later in the book, and that's just not worth it. He does all this heinous shit, everyone gets mad at him, and then they depose him at around 65 years old. So he has been running the government of the world, which is Everfall, which is always daytime, and it's made out of floating islands, and you can fall off the edge of them, and then there's sky ships that float between the islands. It is what it is. Um, He is 65 gets deposed, and everyone thought he died in an attack from uh, Renarin something, I think. I can't remember. The guy that led the fucking revolt, okay? <laughs> we pick up at what I just call part one, Dalen's Day Out, right? So he is 85, and you start the book with... The, the framing device, the narrative framing device that lasts throughout the entirety of Shadow of the Conqueror, which is the longest, most boring fucking suicide note you'll have ever heard in your life and would make no sense if read top to bottom because it all has something specifically kind of to do with articulating into the chapters ahead kind of. It's way too long. And it's also not long enough technically as well because it's, this is supposed to serve as my confession. I am Dalis, Dalen Bababa, also known as Dalis the Bastard or Dalis the Conqueror. And I have sinned. And you will hear this, I think, 10,000 times during this book. I want to die because living is worse than death to me. Living is the worst punishment ever. And so Dalen, being an 85-year-old guy who's too old to fucking creakle crack around anymore, uh, leaves his house. He's been living in a remote village of people in a world where there are newspapers and drawings of this guy. He's probably, arguably, the most famous human being alive. He goes into hiding at 65 at the height of his power after a coup against him. It's literally like Joseph Stalin, Hitler in a world with newspapers, vanishes into the countryside. Crazier things have happened. I digress. He's been living there as a tinkerer or an engineer, something like that, for 20-some-odd years, just doing basic engineering shit. We find out from this point and going forward that for no real reason, uh, other than basically what I assume is supposed to be the will of God, Dalis is fucking the biggest Mary Sue of all time. I hate using that word, but this one time, I think it actually works. He is the smartest engineer to have ever existed. He specifically, while conquering the world, also developed all of the most major technological advancements in the world. So every like five steps, he looks at something, he's like, ah, yes, the fucking automated dildo. Before I grows to power, no one knew you could strap light stone to a dildo and make it go like a steam engine. Before that, the nation's women were dry as a riverbed, but I invented the super dildo. Over and over and over and over again. I lost track of slash did not fucking care about all of the stuff he made because he talked about it first. This is the thing... That just assume it happens every time I'm talking for the duration of this book. Fucking Dalen. We'll see a thing and not really describe it as being a cool thing, right? A lot of this is like really close third person narration. Dalen's fucking wandering around old creakle bones. 
during the first chunk of the book and looking at shit and like there's no reason for you to care. There's no inciting incident, by the way, in this novel. There really is no inciting incident other than him deciding to go kill himself. And Shad does not have the skill or depth of like being to make that like a fast like if that was if this was like some old dour Russian novel like the story begins with an old man ready to go kill himself by throwing himself off the edge of the world I'd be like this is about to be the most fire depressing shit I've ever heard but somehow somehow he manages to make it not interesting you will find out throughout the entirety of this book that there is no big bad except for kind of Dalen but like even he's not um, he just goes and walks around and looks at shit and then will fucking describe it or talk to other people about it for fucking ever paragraphs on paragraphs. And like, unironically, your book, your book does not require the fucking reader to be a student of your world, right? No one's book should require that. You should make me want to understand how your world works or go, that was a neat effect. How was it accomplished? And then like kind of get me bits. Every two pages, I would guess, in this book, we stop and go through a fucking his- history of shit over and over and over again. If you're getting bored of me talking about it, the book is 18 hours long on Audible. That's all I'm saying. So... You can suck it up if I did. (laughs) Dalen starts off by getting in a cart so he can go to the end of the world and throw himself off and fucking die because it's the only thing his crickle crackle old ass wants to do. And all he talks about is how fucking old he is and how fucking sad he is and how full of regret he is. But in the last 20 years, he never just considered with all of the regret and upsettiness and being upsetty spaghetti to like confess or just kill yourself before we even have to watch the rest of the book. It's just like he has just been kept alive, I guess, by by the will of God in this world, which is just the light, which we'll get into, so that you can be forced to read stories about him. We fucking follow him to a cart he gets on the cart, and this is the first part where I was like, this book is drive is going to drive me up the fucking wall. Because he's missing a lot of points where I'm like, this is fantasy vibe. Do a thing that makes me, that just hooks me. Please fucking hook me right now into this book. Show me that I want to see Dalen be a good sword fighter, something like that. He gets into this cart uh, with some fucking local rube from his podunk he's been hiding out in. And this kid is going to go to the main city and wear his dueling sash and try to make it as a sword fighter for fucking reasons. I don't know. I guess there's money to be had or something. I literally can't remember. All of the dueling comes up like once at the beginning of the book, sort of kind of one other time. And then also one more time, I think maybe, but those two times might be connect and then never again, 18 hours. It's 10 minutes of content is dueling. I s- On God's hand to God, maybe 10 minutes. This Rube is like, okay, I fucking like, Dalen's like, you're going to get your ass kicked. Pull over to the side of the fucking road. And I'm going to fucking sort of show you like how bad you are, even though I'm an old guy. Dalen proceeds to just whoop him. He just fucks him up because he's such a good sword fighter. There's no like great moment where he articulates working around his age in some significant way or shows how big of a strategy strategist he is or like articulates how talented a uh, talented he is with the sword other than him just saying get out let's do sword fighting and then he wins and like beats the kid up and then the kid because this is chronicles of everfall book 1 shadow of the conqueror just is like well i guess you're right I guess you're fucking right. <laughs> like, and just agrees. And then that's just, then that's just it. He just accomplishes his goal. This happens numerous times throughout this book. Um, they get back in. What I was saying would be much more interesting in this situation. And I'm not going to go through all of these things throughout the rest of the book. I'm going to kind of hammer out the major plot beats that stood stood out to me at all. 
uh, and the ending, and then we'll get to it. But this is just kind of at the very beginning, without being spoilery. If for some reason someone else wants to get into this, um, th- this this is what this she- scene should have been in any any quality book, mild amount of competence, right? Because this is a scene you would have seen before in other things. You're riding around with the old swordsman. First off, the old swordsman shouldn't be like working. To beat you up. If you have a lot of skill, you should be Miyagiing this kid. You know what I mean? Like literally just get it. So what I said, and he just literally says, pull this card over, gets out, they sword fight. That's it. What I think this should be is he's like already bouncing around. He's like, driver, can you pull over this cart? I want you to pull over. Specifically there, you see Dalen um, choosing the the battlefield for himself. He walks around the kid and is like, well, don't you like, why don't you stand there and then get ready to fight me? And like literally puts the kid, he doesn't even know, into a bad position so that the kid's trying to like fight uphill out of mud and he's on like nice, flat, freshly pressed grass and stuff. And then he just works the kid and fucking like, you know, tires him, tires him out even and like beats him like literally, you never even hit me. But the kid just gasses himself out and can barely fucking stand because he's an out of shape fucking rube farmer or something like that. It should have been something like that. You know what I'm saying? Because it would have given us a series of of really simple revelations back to back in short order. And by the way, Shad, if you ever watch back through this, in short order, motherfucker, stop writing so much. Your prose is not that good. That's just a fact about your life you're going to have to fucking either deal with or improve. So I'm not like falling in love with like the lyricism of your every sentence. You write too much. Write fucking less. So fucking take this to heart. If you ever watch this video, write fucking less and be efficient with your plot beats. This fucking would have accomplished a number of things. First off, we show that he is concerned about his age, right? Dalen, Dalis the Bastard is concerned with his age, so he has to be cautious. We also see that he's a tactical fucking beast. We also see that he's inherently manipulative and does not care about fighting with honor so much as either teaching a lesson or winning a fight. That's what you can show in that simplistic, in that just simple of a scene. You can get all of that stuff done. And most importantly, a fourth thing you can show either through internal dialogue or just, I mean, it's your audience, so... They're probably too fucking stupid, so you are going to have to spell it out for him. He can say, like, back in the day, I really would have just enjoyed killing this guy, but I feel like as hard as it is for me not to, I don't want to hurt him, and I really want to I really want to help him out. He might have even said something like that, but I was so fucking... I'm, it's so hard to focus because the book is so boringly written, and you fucking over-inflate every goddamn paragraph that it is sometimes almost impossible to pay attention and motherfucker you aren't worth Wuthering Heights you know what I'm saying you're not the fucking scarlet letter I'm not getting a test on this if you can't keep me fucking zapped in then that's a fucking L on your part and that's the fattest L you can fucking take is you're fucking boring man boring 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 just took fucking forever to get to that part the other part that I remember of that is that's when uh everybody started calling each other uh, slurs. I won't say them for TOS, but they started calling each other the, uh, the the slur for somebody with like a mental disability and stuff, and then like saying it over and over and over again. This comes up a, a number of times, and it doesn't make any fucking sense because you're in a fantasy world. You've got dark stone, you've got fucking Maguber wagons, you've got sky ships, you've got special words for fucking magic plate armor that goes on top of you. Why not make? a new fucking word that's offensive. Like, you can just make shit up. You can invent new things. You can just make shit up. It's a fantasy world. But you're like, constantly he goes back and starts using common bad words that are only bad in the context of specifically the era we live in right now. And it's it, it it's all horse pucking. At some point during this, he runs into uh, fucking Arik, who is an old shit fucking other guy. He is this world's version of a black dude, which is Charasian, right? Um, I forgot what the cover looked like. I couldn't think if they were actually supposed to be black guys or not. That He's just described as being the most black black guy I've ever heard in my life. 
It's like they're tall. They, the Chirasians are just all tall and naturally strong and cut, and they're they're very large and dark skin, and they have fucking high fade haircuts. <laughs> Which, which doesn't mean naturally right off rip that it's a black guy, but like, I think that's the first time I've ever heard a high fade haircut described in a fantasy novel in my life, which is one of the things I can't say there was a lot of firsts in this book. He made a lot of decisions I've never seen made before. And it was somehow profoundly the wrong one each time. It's absolute fucking insanity. Uh, but he meets, yeah, he meets this guy and I don't know, they talk for a second. I can't remember. This was all at the very beginning of the book. I can't remember what the fuck happens next, but Dalen throws himself off the edge of the world. Right. And while he's falling, he gets blessed by the light or something. Uh, and like the Mistborn in fucking Sanderson's book. Mistborn? I can't remember. The Sanderson's Mistborn series. Um, he snaps and fucking gets powers. And while he's falling for ever, I guess, I don't know. I can't remember if there's something at the bottom of these falls or not. The the geography was never explained in any interesting way. It's like one of those like it's like discussing the fucking topography, like in just general detail of another country in passing. Like, I'm not going to fucking remember that. You've got to like insert me into it. You know what I'm saying? I, I fucking listened to a couple of the fucking game of Thrones books. I listened to all, I listened to all of the Sanderson books I've ever heard. I can describe to you almost, I could probably draw out a perfect map of the fucking blasted lands or whatever from the way of the King. I can remember where the fucking town is. I can remember where the little Coliseum is. I know all the nooks and crannies of the little area where they're putting the bridges over top. And then they're fighting the fucking people with the crazy glowy skin and running after that. I can remember all of that. I can remember the girl's quarters where she sees the fucking people with the fucking symbol heads. I can remember all that. It's not an issue with Audible. It's just so fucking boring. That's my brain cannot 100% focus on all of the stuff that you're saying. And literally it's cut it down. It's not that good. Cut it down. This is 18 hours long, which if Michael Redding or Kate Redding and Michael, whatever the fuck, these guys who are really good narrators, if they read at the same speed I do and I do audiobook narration, that means it's roughly 180,000 words um, of a novel. I don't know if that's exactly the case. It doesn't say how many pages, 504 pages. It's probably, it, that's, yeah, it's probably, you know, 150 to 180,000 words. It's a very fucking long book. It might be shorter because they might read slower than I do, but I digress. He falls off the world and in what should have, should be the first exciting moments of this book. I remember trying to force myself to focus while I'm doing, I'm literally like walking the dog while I'm listening to this. I'm walking my dog, not like metaphorically. I'm literally walking buck outside my neighborhood, trying to understand what the fuck he's talking about because he's falling off the edge of the world for like, it feels like two hours. And he's like, Oh, now I can do this. I can fucking, Oh, the, the energy's in me. Oh, I can swell my mass up. As you know, from the square cube law, I can go backwards. Oh, but I found out that like, if I swell mass to this and then if I attach light to that, and then I think he gets back on land at some point. And then the only interesting thing I swear to God for the first half of the novel novel happens, his feet randomly explode because he overloads them with power. And I was like, Oh, that's fucking interesting. What happened? Then he sort of describes it. We never go back into that again. And I think it's barely even fucking articulated for the rest of the book. That is the beginning and end of part one, Dalen's Day Out. Um, then we get into uh, part two of the book. Dalen's Deception. A, 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 a series of cunning foibles. So the entire middle chunk of this book is boring as fuck and literally next to nothing happens i i have to i cannot hammer this home there is no real overarching plot to the book it is just people kind of running into each other the best i can describe this is is if 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 like um it's like the importance of being earnest 
is the closest thing to fucking Shadow of the Conqueror. Like, if impor- if the importance of being earnest was written to be 18 hours long and had the most unbelievably boring fucking characters, it would be that same vibe. It's just a series of people meeting, having the stupidest fucking conversations you've ever heard, sometimes using slurs for no reason, and it's so awkward, even diegetically, the people say like, hey man, why did you say that? (laughs) Dalen meets Arik again, and Dalen is now, for no real good reason, 17 again. It's 17 again, starring everybody's favorite sociopath, uh, Sky Pirate fucking Stalin. They go around and just describe the fucking universe for, I think, like five hours of the book. Like, seriously, five fucking hours of the book. During this, we are also introduced to the other character whose name I cannot remember. She is a lady. Um, I think her name is Lauren or Loren or Laura or something. I don't know. He de-aged. Yes. Yes. Hold on. Can somebody share? Can somebody just write me a quick list of the actual characters names? I do want to try to say them correctly, but I can't remember them because they're also gibberish names with no naming convention. You can knock fucking Game of Thrones names all you want, but I remember all of the Johns. I re- I can almost probably, I won't do it, but off the top of my head, remember like half of the Tar- Targaryens, like Aegon, Aaron, Aeon, Eon, fucking all of it all the way. But he de-ages from 85 to 17, and from there the book gets fucking weird. It starts off like kind of okay, you know, a little shitty, a little boring, and from there we descend into weird territory because this is an 85-year-old man in the body of, for no real reason, a 17-year-old. He could have been de-aged to 19, past the age of consent. It would have been fine. But for some reason, putting children or legal children, in my eyes, under the age of 18, in sexual situations with a sort of uh, nonchalant consistency is like, is gnarly. This just happens the entire book. As a quick aside, I don't feel like you should cut off like, any specific thing as being like, I can't ever have that in a book ever period. It'll be irredeemable. I think it's fine for children to be put into extreme situations in a book where it's appropriate for that to happen, especially if it's not for specifically people's purient interests, purient, which is a word I have trouble saying means like strictly for sexual gratification, no artistic merit whatsoever. You know, um, kids having to like try to figure out like the intense adult sexual violence situations in, for instance, the Game of Thrones books is kind of like an interesting and really, really gritty, insane insight to how horrible that fucking world is. Um, I don't cotton to the shitty ass fucking uh, whining about that stuff. So it's not like I'm like, oh, it's uh, icky, but quite literally it serves no purpose for him to be a child. At all. I will say this also before we even get to the end of the book. There is no reason for him to be Daedalus the Conqueror at all. Uh, Literally, there's a better book. I'll describe it later. Uh, I just want to describe Chunk 2. And then I'll probably take a real quick break and check chat. And then I'll come back and finish off my, my sort of quick synopsis of this book. And I swear to God, as rambling as this sounds, this is a quick synopsis. Uh, during this, you also get to meet the um, second lady, um, who I, I can't remember. Her name's like Lauren or Laura or something. She is partnered with another black dude um, who is from the Chirasian society. We find out that Chirasians, for no real reason, um, aside from like cultural norms, they go around naked all the time and without their shirts on and act inappropri- inappropriately. Which really fucks with this lady because she has a big hang up about sex. Um, well, I won't even spoil what the hang is hang up is just yet. I feel like there's better times to reveal it. It, it. There's a better time to reveal why she has a big hang up with sex. Um, these characters, the whole Chirasian race of people and culture, makes no fucking sense in the entire book. I feel like Chirasians are really just non-whites. 
non-white just makes more sense. I think there's also some e- like Asian-y, like East Asian looking type people described at some point, but it really doesn't fucking matter. Um, this guy is introduced and it is the beginning of awkward sex talk for the rest of the book. Once you're at this point, by the way, if you get not even just like triggered, if you get just grossed out or like, like you're just like, I am immediately bored by like sophomoric, uh, unfunny sex jokes and descriptions of sex and sexual organs. Um, that's the part of the book where you could pretty much just skip all the rest of the book that that's that's what will filter you it's a bore it's not even a filter it's just a two by four of bad writing uh this guy talks about his penis being strong which means that he's got a hard on all the time my penis is not strong do you want to give me fuck like he's just like this uh, bewildered uh foreigner who's sex obsessed and dark-skinned you know it's a character you character trope you've never heard before this is a this is a Shadiversity original. That definitely not something that almost any Mormon would probably repeat if they're fucking diehard in the church. Uh, if you go to Utah, you can hear these opinions. Um, just general wherever you walk. <laughs> it's not all Mormons are, aren't all bad, but like a lot the, the people that will dog on the Mormon church the hardest are fucking ex Mormons. I swear to God. Uh, the Chirasians are bizarre. By the way, it's C H U R R A S I A N S. I told my wife this, and she immediately said, "Does that mean like a chorizo Ar- Asian?" And I was like, "It sounds like churro Asian to me, like a Mexican Asian." And for anyone else, I would be like, "Well, that's probably just kind of a coincidence." But like, I feel like Shad just heard one of his comics gate friends calling like a Mexican person, like a churro Asian, like a churro Asian. And it was just like, I bet I could get away with using that in a book. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, I, I, I don't know what to really add on that. Those two characters have uh, next to no real chemistry. And even that, even saying that they're probably the only two that are interesting to listen to because at least they're not fucking Dalen and Arik walking around describing everything that they see for, reasons i can't quite remember but i believe it's just dalen is like i want to do some good with this new lease on life dalen decides to go start pirate hunting around halfway through the book um he charters a fucking sky barge and then goes and gets into a fight with another pirate whose name is blackheart the coolest name you've ever heard ever Uh, this is the only interesting part of the book. It was the only part where I was just like constantly listening to everything that happened. And I was in my head almost literally, not even almost, I was literally rooting for Shad to pull it back together. Like you've got it. This is it. You, this is almost fucking interesting. Stick the landing, stick the fucking landing. He does not stick the landing. He jumps off the fucking edge of the sky barge. He hits his head on a rock. He falls bleeding into the fucking Everfall or whatever. I guess it is an Everfall. It's, uh, it's dumb. The sky barge scene is the beginning of the end of any ability for any normal person to read this book and not start going, Shad Brooks is a fucking weird guy. Because you get into weird fucking guy territory immediately. And like, it's not just like a little thing. It's it's like death by 10 billion fucking cuts. We get on to the pirate ship. Obviously, obviously, uh, Dalen beats all the pirates single-handedly. A recurring thing in this is that Dalen does not need any help. Dalen has figured it all out. No one else is necessary for any other part of the plot. They just are fucking ancillary to everything. They don't need to be there. They're there to go, you can't do that. That's a 17th level fucking uh, ball tap. What, you mean that it goes higher? Uh, It could. (laughs) What about this? It's literally, do you know that slightly cringe, um, this is Super Saiyan 2, and this is what it means to go beyond. That meme is this book. But imagine he just keeps going. 
to like 20 fucking levels with every single individual thing that they fucking come across. Um, he wipes out all the pirates instantaneously. At some point uh, earlier, fucking Arik teaches him how to see the light in people, which is actually just carte blanche for him to just kill anybody who's like got a dim heart. So anyone who's kind of got like a little dark hearted, he's like, eh, he probably fucking did it. And he gets super hearing like Superman and can jump through buildings. And then he immediately just starts popping around. And of course, as one would assume, killing rapists. Because people were being raped all the time in very clear-cut situations all over the place. And he just goes around killing them. He's very nonchalant about killing them. This is, mind you, the guy who says the worst punishment for anybody is to live. Just keep that in mind as we discuss what happens going forward from here. Uh, he fights Blackheart, who is like, hey, aren't you one of Dalus's bastards? And Dalen the Conqueror, the world's smartest guy who is the most prolific rapist in the history of the Everfall continents is like, what? I never had any kids. And he's like, bro, are you fucking stupid? Which was like, I wish Blackheart stuck around because he was the only character that made any sense. Unfortunately, he gets beaten a sword fight. And for no real good reason, um, Dalen impales him through the ass on a broken chunk of wood uh, and, and kills him in the most like, unironically sociopathic way possible like little kid the, shad wrote this in 2019 which means he was still pro i guess like 40 or something and me personally i grew out of this hyper edgy phase you know hey man i still play the sith side in, in uh knights of the old republic literally when knights of the old republic was out before i graduated high school shad however not quite the same guy um of course we find out that uh, the ship that he, he was on, that Shad's character was on, Shad was on, <laughs> that Dalis was on, um, was actually a slave barge full of little girls that had all been being sexually assaulted. And he goes and kills all the people on his barge. Now he owns two barges. For some reason, he lets one of the people live. It's some kid named Sane. Um, and Sane gets the barge in the end and a bunch of money. We have one second, one brief fucking second where an interesting thing can happen. And then from here on out, the story is boring as fuck. Um, I'm going to finish this thought and then I'll go to chat. Dalen describes the big bad, what I think is supposed to be the big overarching big bad in this story, which we never really get into earlier hey bud i can't i can't talk and do a full bunny cam right now but you can have this oh look look oh look see those are two halves of the same um apparently in this world like it said in the thing if you spend too much time in the dark you turn into a, a shade or whatever the fuck and then you get superpowers and you can rip people's arms off and you just want to kill people and i think like you eat them a little bit and then one of the weirdest things possible to mention, but it was only the only interesting thing, is that there's special shades. And if you're a girl that gets raped a lot before you turn into a shade, then you turn into a lust, which is a special type of shade that's basically some sort of ur succubus that just goes hunts down men and men have no ability to resist fucking the uh, former rape victim turned super succubus demon thing. Uh, that was like kind of interesting because I was like, I can't believe uh, you're stupid enough to put that in a book. <laughs> Other people, I can imagine almost kind of getting away with it, you know, but like literally I can't see any other author I've almost ever written outside of the like splatterpunk genre which i also have next to no fucking respect for saying uh you know what what if like a little girl gets fucking sexually assaulted so much that she turns into a specific type of super demon that can succubus men to death and uh, that's like wow that is the most you have a whole book about just constantly killing rapists and, like, your inability to understand, like, the greater implications of sexual assault or, like, have any, any 
fucking remote amount of sympathy in your heart for it is insane. Insane. Um, we're going to begin part three of this here in a second. I think that's a good part to stop uh, because the next part is even more ridiculous, but it's a good part to start again. I'll be right back like with you. And like, subscribe. And like, subscribe. Like, and subscribe. Like, and subscribe. Like, and subscribe. Like, and subscribe.